Hey, Josephina. Hi, Melissa. It's so nice to see you again. It's good to see you. I miss you. I know. I miss you, too. It looks super warm there. It is. I'm actually in Florida right now. Oh, what? Okay. <laughs> when did you go to Florida? So, um, I just got here last week. I've been okay. in Mexico since January. Okay. Um, Chalo travels a lot for work, and he actually... Um, He's been in Mexico since December, um, a day after Ooh. Christmas, and he's been working down there. So we, the girls and I, we went with my family um, to visit while he was working down there. And we actually got to see him for two whole weeks because we oh. went, um, we were basically living in a hotel. <laughs> okay. And he, we're not near each other. It's a totally different state from where he was working to where uh, my family's from. Okay. But at least we got to see him for a little, and yeah. uh, we're back in the U.S. now, and we came to visit my sister for okay. a couple of weeks, and then um, we'll be leaving sometime next week, but okay. yeah, it's been interesting. <laughs> yeah, so um, you said you and Chella were in, like, different states when you're down there? Yeah, so it was um, four hours away. Okay. We were four hours away from each other, so and I got to see him, and he would go on the weekends whenever he wasn't working, but it's still so hard. <laughs> yeah, is he still there then? Yeah, he's still there. He'll be done um, next week. That's why we're okay. leaving next week, too. Okay. Uh, okay. He'll be going to Michigan for about two weeks, and then probably um, he'll probably have to go back for another okay. month. Yeah. Uh, for another month yeah how are you handling that like how was it when you were in Michigan and he was in um Mexico it's so hard because um I have a two-year-old and a one-year-old they're both so attached to him and I feel like together we already have a routine but I feel like sometimes I feel like I literally have twins they both need my attention and it's so hard <laughs> to like it's just me I have family that helps me out a lot but still it's transitioning from them seeing him like every day to not seeing him anymore it's and there is so little they don't understand he left right. to work or you know this more than anyone <laughs> yeah but like for those who don't understand what it's like it's not just your kids are in their same routine that they're normally and like their dad is literally like taken away from them and they don't understand it so they're like confused and hurt and they don't they can't explain their emotions either so. Yeah, their emotions are off the hook. It's like, it's crazy. And then it gets overwhelming sometimes because I, it's not like I try to tell them, but they don't understand. They're little. Oh. They don't know daddy had to go work and he'll be back. But Right. And so I know you just started this like Dear Mommy um, page on Instagram. Yeah. Where did that like stem from? Did it stem from like what it's like being like a mom that husband travels or tell me about like yeah so I really post a lot of my like mommy issues on my personal Instagram and then I get so much feedback from other moms like they'll be like oh I thought I was the only one that felt this way or oh my gosh I can totally relate to it and I'm like I can't believe there's other moms out there that feel like they're the only ones going through that thing. And it's like, no, you're not alone. So it's something I've always wanted to do, but that kind of like encouraged me to do it. Like, I just yeah. don't want like moms to feel like they're alone. Like there's other moms feeling the same way. <laughs> I love that. It's like a safe space. And I know you like share things often. I think like today you share two different things and the things you share are so relatable. Yeah, I just want moms to be able to relate um, to someone or just give like moms a little encouragement or like a positive reminder. I don't know. I just want to spread positivity. <laughs> yeah. Um, what exactly, what was it that you shared today about like, it was something about like um, doing a good enough job. What was that? Oh, I posted a picture of, it was my little one on the plane, like traveling, yeah. like don't wait to travel until they're older because they probably won't remember, but you will. And like that also matters. Like you'll remember all of that when they're older and it's just don't wait till they're older because who knows what can happen in a year or two when 
Right. You make memories. <laughs> and as moms, I feel like all the time we're like trying to put our kids first, but you said it best, like your memories with them matter just as much as their memories with you. Yeah. It goes by so fast. It does. They grow up so fast. It's crazy. So speaking of traveling, you literally traveled down to Mexico with two babies. Yeah. During the Actually, pandemic. What the heck was that like? Did you question your sanity? <laughs> yeah, I definitely did. I had a cousin come with me. Okay. Uh, she went to to come with me because I feel like I couldn't have done it by myself at the <laughs> airport. I was literally sweating and she was there to help me, but I was still sweating. And then on her way back, my sister came back with me. So like, I am so thankful I have help, but it's still so hard. <laughs> so hard. And were you scared at all? Like what was the airport like? Was it pretty safe in the airplanes too? Yeah, I feel like they have a lot of... Um, precautions right now like you have to make like all these quest answer all these questionnaires and like it takes a while so anyone traveling go with time to the airport but um <laughs> yeah I feel like they're doing their part good good yeah I think that that could be scary traveling with two young ones especially going to a different country um which that's something I actually had a couple questions for you on so um with the pandemic and a lot of your family is in Mexico right especially right now yeah um my grandparents are actually in Mexico so we wanted to go visit them um I feel like in my in their little town like you um don't hear about it as much as um like bigger cities but um it was still scary like thinking that like someone could take it down there or and you, there was a few people that had it but um it's still scary because like a lot of the it's like a lot of the older population that are living down there and they don't have the same how should I say it like the same health care as we do in the United States like okay. to find a doctor it's a lot harder and like the testing, it's so expensive. Like, I'm sure the numbers are way higher, but since it's so expensive, I feel like a lot of people don't get tested because they don't have the, I don't want to say like, it sounds rude to say money, but like. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, the healthcare is so expensive, they don't have that extra money to spend on that type of stuff, which exactly. is so sad. Yeah. Yep. Um, so like when it all started, were you like super concerned about your family being down there and like knowing that the healthcare is not as great or is just like way more expensive down there? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, like my grandparents, they don't go out at all. And I feel so bad because here we are going to visit them and they're doing everything they can to like avoid getting the virus. But I mean... We were also doing our part, like making sure we were safe while visiting them and stuff. But it is, it is scary. That would be, I know that would be like a lot of like extra anxiety on top of already being a mom, you know? Yeah. I don't know about you, like when my grandparents um were alive, like I was super close with them. And so like, I can't imagine what it would be like knowing they're in a different country and don't have all of the luxuries and us as Americans living in the U.S., we don't picture them as, or think of them as luxuries. It's just normal for us to have, like, good health care, and we take that for granted. Yeah, um, exactly. Like, just to be able to get oxygen, like, if people needed it, they, it was crazy. It was, like, hours away to be able to find oxygen. I'm like, that's so crazy. That's stuff that, like, we can get so easy, and, right. like, just crazy one call to a medical supply company right down the road and they're delivering it to your door yeah. like mm -hmm. that's crazy um so I actually want to dive into talking about um like what it's like raising like bilingual children in the United States um and what it was like for you being raised in the United States um, when, like, most of your family was down in Mexico, what it's like having that, um, like, split family. And 
what something that really made me think um, was Levi the other day made a comment. So for those of you that don't know, my son Levi, he's five. Um, he's in kindergarten and he was like, mom, why do two of my friends, I won't say their names, um, but he was like, why do two of my friends get to go on vacation for such a long time? And he was talking about two little boys who go to Mexico for the winter. And it just like made me think back and remember about like when I was in elementary school or middle school and high school, and I had those friends that would go to Mexico for the winter. And you always would be like, well, that's not fair. They get to leave school and we don't, why do they get to go for it? And I'm saying like they, because that's how we said it. Like, I hate to throw out the term like racism or like racial, but like it kind of was like, we classified them as like, they like no they're just students like us but their family lives in mexico like those students are going down to see their family and so like one thing that i want to try to do as a mom and like i'm hoping that in this conversation you can help me like coach me through like how i can address that with levi is like perspective like they're not skipping school to go on a vacation they have to go down there to see their family and for them like you were uprooted from your school and had to miss X amount of school and miss sports and activities and your friends. And then you probably had to come back and felt like you were like behind and like weren't close with your friends again. Right. Like, yeah. so I just feel like it's so important, especially in our community, because we do have a high Hispanic population spreading awareness and like teaching our kids to be inclusive and like think about the students perspective that are actually leaving. So I did a lot of talking just now. But if you want I to that you bring that up because it's true. It's I feel like it's so important that we teach our kids since um, a young age because they'll grow up um, more aware of what it really is like. Um, like for example, I grew up um, going to Mexico every year. Um, and like you're saying, you come back and you have to catch up. They usually give you homework or like you have you have to turn in your work when you come in. And it's really not vacation that we're going for. We're going to um, we're going to visit our family that really um, they can't come to the U.S. So um, like our parents left their country to move to a, a whole different country and so they just want to go back and see their family like they don't they don't get to see them every week or once a month or whatever it's just um a season they get to see them throughout the year and i just think it's it's just crazy how i don't know like this is sometimes I don't know how to express my words and I feel like that has something to do with it too because I'm like bilingual and like in my mind I'm saying things in Spanish and English and translating <laughs> sometimes it's really hard for me to express myself so I'm take sorry. your time <laughs> but yeah it's really important that we educate um our children since they're young so they can understand um what it's like I feel like they shouldn't like we really shouldn't have them see color or like ethnicity they should just all be able to see each other the same but I remember growing up like I would have like kids ask me like oh do you have a green card and I was still so young to understand like what they were even talking about like I didn't even know or like uh and you know that stuff that came from their parents too like just the way yeah, people exactly. talk about it yeah so that's why i think it's so important that we talk about it since a young age so they don't bring it to like other kids at school but or like you would have the kids or teachers tell you like oh you need to speak english if you were talking to like another like friend that spoke spanish or whatever and it's like okay like i get it at like certain times you do have to like speak English because it's disrespectful I guess if you're like around like other people but if you know how to speak the language you're talking to a friend like I feel like they should be able to speak whatever like language they want if they're not really like you know I agree I and I actually a lot of little things I remember too like 
I'm just going to be 100% like open and vulnerable. And like, I pray that people like understand that, like I'm learning through all this too. But I remember being younger and like, just being so upset when like people would speak Spanish to each other. And I like, just didn't understand like what, like they're in the United States. Why are they speaking Spanish? And like the older I got and the more I like learned about other cultures and like stop judging people like I understood like who cares if they're speaking Spanish like that makes them feel comfortable and that's where they can get their point across like you even were just saying like sometimes you're sitting there thinking it's hard for you to think of the words because you like are like thinking of it in Spanish and English and like who cares if they're speaking if they're not talking to you what does it matter why do you need to know what they're saying you know and that was my primary language growing up because my parents don't speak very well English. So I feel like that's something I do want to pass on to the girls. Um, we made Spanish their primary language. Okay. Um, because I feel like it's so important for them to know both languages. It opens up so many opportunities. Um, like it already has for me and my husband. So I just want that for them to be able to know that. And I don't know. I just feel like if we make English their primary right now that they're little, it's just harder for them to like actually learn uh, Spanish later on the road because at one point I know English will be their primary language. So I want to make sure that they know Spanish first. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And it's their culture too. like, let them embrace that and like teach them to be proud of it and not like, exactly be ashamed of it you know I think that's super important especially to raise strong children like be proud of where you came from be proud of what you go through and what your family went through to get where you are yeah that's something I want to teach the girls I want them to be proud of where they're coming from teach them where they came from and like you said be proud of it because I mean then they'll pass it on later on and I just don't want and it to eventually end you know right like and I want them to feel like they belong here like I don't want them to ever feel like they don't belong here because they do belong here <laughs> like yeah did you ever feel that way growing up if yeah, you if you I are okay like, with being like vulnerable and sharing like yeah of course I feel like sometimes you feel like you don't belong there or here because you go over there and then like people in Mexico they see you like oh she's coming like from the U.S. and like you know and then here it's like you belong in Mexico so it's like where do I belong like like at one point yeah I feel like you do feel lost and then but you just have to like grow up and like be proud you know we're lucky enough to be from both places and we get to call two places home (laughs) yeah oh I love that that's sweet yeah I love that um another thing um I want to talk about it relates to this is how our parents um come to the U.S. to like give us a better life like in their mind I feel like that's what they're thinking of like they're moving they're leaving their country to give their kids a better future like something they weren't able to do they want us to be able to um and it's I feel like without like I'm gonna speak for my experience yes. like um I am where I am because of my parents and I will always thank them for that um but like I feel like Hispanic parents like and I mean they have to like in order to give us a better life they're always like working 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 they work so hard and I appreciate my parents for all of that but it's also like I wish I would have spent more time with them or they would have been more involved with me like sign me up for sports or take me to do certain things like I feel like that probably maybe would have made me a different person because I've always been super super shy my whole life like growing up and I feel like maybe if I would have been more involved in um, activities or events um, I don't know, maybe I would have been a little different. Uh, But yet again, I wouldn't be here talking about it today. So that was exactly my thought. Like, I hope you I'm going to get teary. (laughs) You are literally like, such an inspirational person. And like, to hear you like, think like, Oh, what if it made me a different person? Like, 
your parents did such a good job raising you. And I think so many people look up to you. So many people that I know, so many people that I don't even know, but I see all the people like commenting on your stuff on social media. And I think you are such like a well-rounded person and you're so understanding. And like, I feel like not a lot of people are like you in the fact that you like take a step back and you like see the entire like world around you or the whole picture when, before you even like respond to things. And like, it's really hard to find people like that. And so I'm lucky. My to know sister you. told I'm me she's to like, I friends. know you're gonna cry, and I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, I, am. I am really <laughs> lucky that you came into my life too, because you honestly inspire me so much. Like, I feel like you were one of the reasons why you like, like I became more like out there. Like, you're not afraid to help people, and. Yeah. It's something I've like, I want to make a difference in the world. And my family, sometimes they're like, oh, here she goes again, wants to save the world. But I'm like, I know I can. And even yeah. if I change like one person's life, like that's all that matters. Like, I don't know. That's how I see it too. Like some people are probably thinking the same thing. Like, oh, here she goes again, another idea. But like, if I can change the world for one person, if I can make a difference in one person's life to change the way they're living or just to ignite that flame that they need, like, then what I'm doing is that's exactly why I'm doing it. Then I've like accomplished that. And yes. I, yeah, you're definitely the same way. And I love that. It's hard to find people like that. Yes. So I'm um, so glad you came into my life. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> uh, everything happens for a reason, right? Yes. So, um, I know you had a couple other things you wanted to talk about. I don't know if you like wrote them down or if they're in the back of your mind. Um, well, I wanted to talk about like how important it is to love yourself as a mom, like than from the person you were, <laughs> like, just like your body is one of the things like our body as a mom changes so much, like. I used to be so skinny and for the longest time I feel like I was so hard on myself just for that like I'm a whole different person I birthed two kids like one year after another like I obviously my body is going to change and I am slowly accepting my new body and I have felt so much better lately like just by like changing the way I think about myself I feel so much better now and I feel like that's what us moms have to do, like realize it's not going to be the same. And we can, we can get to wherever we want to be. Just be nice to yourself, like take care of yourself and don't be hard on yourself. Like you could get anywhere you want to with the work you put into, but be nice to yourself and you'll get to where you want to be. I love that. I, Cause you do see your body change. Like I know you get like stretch marks from having kids and you gain weight and like your boobs deeply. And I was lucky enough to like win an augmentation. And again, that's not for everybody, but again, for me to love me, like that's something that I felt I wanted to do. And like, because I allowed myself to do that, like I'm so happy with it, but it's like loving your body, like no matter what, like, and doing things for yourself, like getting a gym membership, going, getting your hair done, getting your nails done. Like you're saying, like, be nice to yourself, allow yourself and pour your pour into you like you pour into other people. Yeah, like you and like you were saying, like, do it for yourself because they're you, you're always going to have people talk about you like no matter what. So if it's something that you want that you feel good in that you want to do, like, don't care what other people have to say about it. You're exactly. doing it. It's not their body. Yeah, you're doing it for yourself. It's making you feel good, and that's what matters. Um, One thing I was super nervous about when I got my breast augmentation is, like, wondering what people would think of me and, like, being, like, okay, well, obviously, like, she isn't, like, accepting motherhood, and, like, that's not a good example for her kids, you know? And, like, obviously, I wouldn't want my daughter getting a breast augmentation at 18, but... Also, in order for me to be the best mom possible that I can be, I have to love myself. And if that means doing something for me, it doesn't matter what other people think. They don't have to understand it. They don't have to know where, like, it came from and deciding that, like, your inner peace is so important. And, like, it's your inner peace, not your friend's inner peace. And to be honest, if they're your friend, 
and they're talking bad about it, like, get rid of that person. Yeah. They do, you do not need that person in your life. Like, yeah. I am so, like, such a firm believer in, like, if you want to be happy, like, you have to just eliminate those people around you that are, like, talking bad about you behind your back. And, like, that means tightening up your circle, but it will bring you so much peace. Yeah, like you were saying, um, it's so hard to change. I feel like it's so hard to change the way adults think. So, like, if you have a friend that is toxic, like, I feel like it's going to be hard to change the way they think, but you have to change the way, like, okay, maybe they're really not my friend and maybe I don't need to be around them. You have to, like, see the bigger picture. Um, maybe you really don't need them in your life, you know, if they're, like, that toxic. So at that point, like, it's up to you and not, like, changing the other person, if that makes any sense. Yeah. No, it makes total sense. Like, there comes a point when you get to adulthood, and it should happen before adulthood, but, like, when you're young, like, emotions and hormones and like trying to fit in with everybody it's hard but like once you become adult an adult like there comes a point where you have to be like okay like talking about somebody or judging someone for this that's not going to make you feel better that's not going to heal your wounds and like so for me like I'm going to be honest like there's been times that I've really hurt people in the past like I used to talk about my friends and like gossip about people but like I realized like the reason I was doing that is because I wasn't happy with myself and it made me feel good temporarily to bring down other people. And like, that's not okay. Yeah. And so there comes a point where you have to understand that concept or like you won't change. Like you're saying, like if you aren't, if you can't see the big picture, you're not going to change. Yeah. I feel like I changed. Well, it helped me change once I became a mom because I feel like, I truly believe like you have to lead your kids by being an example to them. So they're going to do, well, not all the time, but they're going to do what they see. And if I want my kids' voices to be heard and I want them to um, do whatever they want to be, be whatever they want to be in this world, like I have to teach them. Like I want them to see that if I can do it, they can too. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. And same with like, um, how you treat people too. like, your kids are going to learn from you and whether they learn, like, my mom did this, so I'm going to do that. Or my mom did this, and I absolutely don't want to be like that. Like, you want to be the good example for your kids, you want them to learn from your good example and not your bad example. And yeah. so I totally agree, like, having kids changed my world. And not only that, but, like, becoming a wife and, like, finding my husband, like, it completely changed me as a person, like, and that's what I feel like is so important, like, having those people in your life that, like, make you want to be a better person. Yeah. Kind of off topic, but. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Something I feel strongly about, too. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Um, what else did we want to talk about? Is there anything that you, anything else that you want to bring up? I think for me, it's just like educating your kids and yourself about like perspective and seeing things from other people's point of view, um, especially when it comes to like different like races and nationalities. Um, I think that there's a lot of work that needs to be done on all sides and cutting people slack because life is hard and people make bad decisions sometimes. Um, but you know, like support one another and find those group of people who like do make you want to be a better person. Um, yeah. and then, Oh, that's what it was. Motherhood working. Yeah. So like you were working a ton and working from home too. And you had your kids and your husband was traveling and like, how? <laughs> How did you do all that? And like, when did you finally decide like to just take a step back and enjoy like what you're doing now? Like, was that hard to do? Yes, I have worked basically like my whole life. <laughs> I feel like since we were five, my parents opened up um, a business, like a little bakery that then became like a little restaurant. Um, so since I was five, I was there like most of the time. So I feel like I'm so used to working. And then I was 18, I believe, when they um, decided they wanted to sell it. Um, 
so that was basically like my whole childhood I was literally working so that I feel like that's what I was used to I um, graduated high school went to college then I became a medical assistant and I well you would know this like I love working I <laughs> love working so <laughs> and then I beca- became a mom and like it becomes harder like finding someone to take care of your kids and then like being able to be a, a like working mom and a mom at home, it, it's hard. And at one point, then I had the other one, um, and it just became harder to find like uh, someone that would watch the girl. So I had the opportunity, thank God, to work from home a couple of hours, and I will always be thankful for that opportunity. Um, but I would wake up early in the morning before they were before they would wake up and like try to get some work done or when they were napping or quiet because they they're crazy they're chaotic and it was hard sometimes but um yeah I am I don't know like I know I want to go back to um further my education I know I don't want to stop there um and i'm actually looking into that right now and then um so hopefully i am able to do that go back to work um and the girls grow up so quick like i eventually they'll be in school and i'll be able to work as much as i can so i like at one point i'm like okay you need to like calm down like it's okay it's temporarily you'll be able to work go back to work at one point like if if you if i have the chance to enjoy them at home then i'm going to take it you know and i don't know i just feel like we have like as moms we have like so much like you want to be this this well we have we i don't know how to say it like it's not if we really want to it's like it just come. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm saying now. <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? Like, as a mom, you have so much to do. Yeah. And, it's like, and you want to be able to do it all. And then yeah. you feel guilty when you can't do it all or you're giving more to like one thing than the other. Right. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And I know you do it all. Well, you make it seem so easy. And I know it's probably so hard because like you're saying the guilt of like, maybe you wanted to be at home, but also like loving your job. And I don't know, it's just crazy. (laughs) It is so hard too, like, especially for me, because like, this is my family here. But like, I also treat my job and the entire organization also like my family. So like, in a sense, I treat that like, it's my kids. So like, I feel so guilty when I'm giving more to my own biological family than I'm giving to my work family. It's so hard to balance that it's so Um, hard yeah but like also like we want moms to know that we like you can do it like it's possible like if you truly like you love it just as equal like it's possible to do both things it's so important too that like if you really do want to work and be a mom like you need to let your kids see that working makes you feel good and it's something that you love because if they're seeing that like going to work is like making you angry and you don't like your job like they're gonna feel like well like why is she doing that then but like you want them to like be proud of what you're doing and like look forward to being like you someday finding a career that fulfills you you know at least that's how it is for me so like that's what makes it easier for me yeah like setting that example that we have little girls like we want them to be able to see that like you can do whatever you want you can be a mom yeah. you can work yep. yeah yeah <laughs> exactly exactly they can do it all they can do one they can do the other like mm. they don't have to be moms if they don't want to when they grow up they don't have to work if they don't want to when they grow up they can be a stay-at-home mom if they're you know yes. if they have like a spouse that can support that too like but they need to do what fuels their fire okay. and they're passionate about yep Make it yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, I love that. Okay, well, do you have anything else? Well, there's so much we could talk about, but <laughs> I we'll feel break like... it up. Yeah, <laughs> it's already 35 minutes in. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, it was okay. So nice.
talking to you. It was good talking with you too and catching up and hearing how things are going. I'm glad that you're in Florida visiting some other family now. I'm sure it's nice to be with your sisters and yeah. 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 Okay. All, All right. right. Well, thank you. I will talk with you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.